Hey, this is Casey Ferris. Thanks for checking out another one of my videos. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the HSL secondary tab inside of Adobe Premiere. Now, I'm gonna be using Adobe Premiere CC 2015.3. So if you have an earlier version, it might not quite look like this. If you have a later version, it might be slightly different, but you can use your smart things to think about that. So if you're at all familiar with the Lumetri color panel, you know that there are six main sections. There's basic corrections where you do just that, the basic corrections, where you can easily adjust things like exposure, temperature, tint, contrast, that type of stuff kind of the big corrections. The creative tab is more for the creative things. You can do things like tint your highlights and shadows, apply LUTs and looks, and even give it a nice faded film vibe. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm tizzin' a bizzin'. Curves are nice and curvy. And we got the three-way color wheels, which lets you adjust the highlights, midtones, and shadows of the image, both, both the hue, saturation, and luminance. But then we come down to the HSL secondary, and some of you might be like, what the heck is going on? And although this is a relatively new feature in Lumetri, it's a pretty standard color grading tool. And what it's used for is adjusting specific colors within the image. And you can select which colors you want to adjust by using eyedroppers or sliders. So here's how it works. Let's say I want to select these green balloons. I'm gonna go here to set color and grab the eyedropper and drop it on the balloons. So I've selected my green. And an easy way for me to preview what I've selected is just to hit this little tick box right here next to color gray, and it will show me just what I have selected. I can also twirl this down and go to color on black, which might be a little easier to see, or white on black. So now that I've selected green, I can play with these sliders to adjust my selection. And HSL stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. And this is making a selection on my image based on the hue of the pixels, the saturation, and the luminance of them. And so if I were to take this slider and just move it over, I'm not selecting the green anymore. I can switch it over to blue, select maybe some of the warmer colors, but that's pretty much the color that you're selecting. And if I click and drag on the white line, that moves this whole selection. This little arrow is the width of the selection, and the whiter this is, the more colors it's keying. And then the bottom arrow is the softness. And so you pretty much want to just play with that until you get a good selection on whatever color you're trying to select. And this is the same with the saturation and the luminance. And they kind of work together. You kind of have to play around with them to get a good selection. But once you have it looking pretty decent, you can go back to your image and maybe start playing around with it. So this green, maybe we want this to be more of a deeper green. So what I might do is bring up the saturation a little bit, maybe darken it down and put some blue in there. So now we have this nice rich green. Let's see the difference between that. So here's before and here's after. So we're only playing with the colors that we have selected in our HSL secondary. Now, if we move back and forth, this is actually keying pretty well, but a lot of the time you'll have to play with it quite a bit to get it looking nice. And one of the things that we can do to help us out, I'll switch back to my mask mode, are these two little sliders, denoise and blur. If I pump up denoise, it's gonna take some of the noise out of the selection. And if I blur it, it's gonna blur the selection. And that makes it so this selection doesn't chatter quite as much, and it's a little bit less noticeable. You do wanna be careful to make sure not to go too insane, because if you blur it too much, you're gonna end up selecting all sorts of weird stuff and you don't want that. So it's pretty much a matter of playing around with this until you get a good selection that only selects the colors that you want and doesn't chatter. These adjustments also work best when you don't have to change the colors a whole lot. If I were to try to change these to blue, it doesn't work quite as well because it's such a drastic change that it's really noticeable. Sometimes you can pull it off, but you really have to play with your key to get that to work. So there are limits. But once you've set your key, you have a bunch of adjustments down here. You can also switch it to three-way color corrector and play with things there. So there's our enhanced green balloons, and it looks nice, yeah. So if you've been a little bit confused about the HSL secondary thing in Lumetri, I hope that shines some light on it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for new videos, also comments below would be a great place for that. If you like this video, hit like, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, first of all, what are you doing? And second of all, you should do that now. Okay, I love you. I hope that your paths are made straight and I will not kill you with a thousand balloons, most likely. My name's Casey Ferris, thanks for watching.